But an incident had happened at the mission with a man, and the Lord gave me a message. You know, he gave me a message out of it. Uh, I had a man there, and he was saying, uh, you know, he was doing some stuff, and I told him, I said, you keep on doing what you're doing, and I gotta, I'm going to have to put you out of the mission. And this was uh, the statement you, that he made. He said, well, just let me show you my worth. You know, what I mean to you and the mission. And I thought to myself, I said, you ain't got to show me much, amen. Because <laughs> you're already at, at the point I'm, I'm about to have to put you out of the mission. But then I thought about this, this uh, scripture over in 1 Corinthians chapter n number 3. You know, Paul is actually, he's teaching here that they can't have the meat. Uh, he had been actually teaching them with milk because they were carnal. Right. Carnal. And I don't know about you, but uh, at the mission, I deal with a lot of carnal, <laughs> carnal people. They come in and they think that they're saved and they tell me all kind of crazy stories about being saved, but they've been in the world all their life yeah. uh, and, and they're real carnal. And Paul here is, he's telling about, uh, you know, that one water and one actually uh, a planet. And, but in verse number seven, he said, but neither one is anything. In other words, he's saying that Christ is everything. And, you know, we, uh, you, we see that in, in, the, in the independent circle now. Uh, uh, 25 years ago when I first started going out to camp meeting, I went to a meeting and a man asked me, said, who's your preacher? And I told him and he said, oh, you're not one of our stripe. I said, well... I got to looking at myself. I said, I don't know about them stripes, but I love the Lord. Amen. And that's kind of what Paul is saying here, you know. It don't matter where you come from. It don't matter what group you're in. It don't matter whose friend you are or whose friend you're not. It's nothing with God. It's all about Jesus Christ. And then when I got to thinking about, you know, what this... You, this man actually said, I, I remembered verse number 13. It says, For every man's work shall be made manifest, for the day shall declare it, because it shall be revealed by fire, and the, and the fire shall try every man's work of what sort it is. Yeah. And I got to thinking. He said, every man's work shall be manifest. Right. What does that mean? It, it, it means revealed. Yeah, right. Revealed. So you don't have to prove your worth. Right. God is proving your worth every day. Yeah, right. If we look in the scriptures, we can look back at Abraham. God proved Abraham's actually worth whenever he asked him to offer up Isaac. And you can go one after another and we see that God manifests every man's work in the Bible. And he's still doing the same thing today in our, our lives. A man can tell you anything. But what's going to happen is it's going to be shown it's going to be shown if he's real or if he's not real. You ain't, you ain't got to worry about him. You ain't, you, you ain't got to fret about him. You, you ain't got to think, well, I got to do this or he's going to do that. You, all you got to do is watch him. Yeah. Amen. I, I don't know about you, but I'm a people person. I watch people. I hear them say all kind of things. But I promise you, I don't believe everything I hear. Amen. Amen. Yeah, amen. Yeah. I, I just watch what they do. What they do. Yeah. I watch where the, the, uh, they go. I watch if anything results from it. Yeah. 
And that's what God is doing. He's yeah. manifesting every one of our, our lives. Yeah. He's showing the rest of the world who you really are. Amen. So if I had a mess, if if I had a title for this message, it would be: Is God proving you? Yeah. Is God proving you? Can you see God proving your life? Can you see God proving what you say you are? Hey. Or what you say you will do? Because yeah. he's going to. Yeah. Whether you see it or not, he's going to. Right. He said every man's work. Right. He didn't say some men. He, he didn't say a few men. He said, but he's going to prove every man's work. Right. I tell you, I, over the last 20-something years, I've seen a lot of men's work be proved to be good work. And then I've seen their work to be proved to be a fake and a phony. Hey, Amen. Right. And God's not interested in that, I promise you. Amen. But he said he would manifest every man's work. And then he said, for the day shall declare it because it shall be re revealed by fire. Amen. We see he's going to manifest it, but then we see the type of method he's going to use yeah. and that's where we have a problem yeah. every one of us has a problem whenever God starts using the fire yeah. to yeah. manifest our work right. amen uh, first Peter chapter 4 over there uh, Peter had it good <laughs> he, he had it down pat amen first Jesus chapter 4 verse number 12 he said Beloved, think it not strange concerning the fiery trial which is to try you as though some strange thing happened unto you. Hey. He said, uh, but rejoice in as much as ye are partakers of Christ's suffering that when his glory shall be revealed ye may be glad also with exceeding joy. Amen. He said, hey, when, whenever God's proving you, whenever he's using the, uh, the method of fire in your life, he said, don't think it's strange. He said, it's going to come. Why? Because, hey, we have to be proven. And a lot of times he sends the trials in our lives to prove us. And he said, you ought to be rejoicing at that. Why? Because you've been a partaker of the suffering of Jesus Christ. Right. I don't know about you, but if it's going to bring God glory, I'm ready to suffer for him. Amen. Yeah. Hey, he did so much for me. Why would I not be willing to suffer for him? Hey, why would I not be willing to suffer trials and persecution and everything else for the glory of God? Amen. He said, hey, I ought to be waiting for it. I ought to be watching for it. Why? Because it's coming. He said, don't think it's strange. He said, hey, that you be a partaker with exceedingly joy. If ye be reproached for the name of Christ, happy are ye for the spirit of glory uh, of, of God rests upon you. On, on, on their part, he is evil spoken of, but on your part, he is glorified. Amen. Amen. Hey, I don't know about you, but I, I don't care when people talk bad about me. Amen? Because I know who I'm doing it for. Amen? I don't care when they persecute me. Amen? Why? Because I know who I'm doing it for. I promise you, I didn't start out 20-something years ago in the ministry at the Crossroad Rescue Mission with the approval of the brethren. Amen? I did not. Amen? But I'll tell you what. Over the 20-something years, I've been persecuted some, sometimes. I've been put down some, sometimes. But I ain't never worried about that. You know why? Because I started out with the Lord. Amen? And he's took well care of me. I don't know about you, but hey, I've got everything I've ever needed in the Lord. He's given me everything I've ever needed. Most of the times, he gives me everything I ever wanted. Amen? Why? Because he's a good God. Amen? I, hey, I don't mind when the fire comes because I know God is, is working in the fire and I, I don't know about you but I kind of like the fire amen why because it, it brings all that uh, all, all, all that old filth to the top 
Amen. It exposes everything. Amen. And that's what he's got to do in our lives to get us to the point that he can use yeah. us. He can use us. He's got to try you. He, he's got to test you. If you never go through any trials or any troubles or any testing, you're probably not being used of God. Amen. And, and, and hey, look here. Let me throw this in. Don't think that somebody who is going through a trial or testing or trouble has done something wrong. Amen. It's not that he's doing something wrong. He's just trying to get you to the place that he can use you better. He can, he can use you more. Amen. I get tired of hearing some people say, well, you know, oh, so-and-so is going through trouble, and he must have did something. To, you know, the Lord really whooping him. Yeah, yeah he's whooping him because he's going to use him, amen. Right. He, he want to use him, and he knew that he could, he could take the testing out of the fire. Right. He don't put some people through it because they can't take it, amen. amen. They, they fold at the at the moment of it. Amen. But he, he'll use that method of the fire. And we don't understand that sometimes. But let me tell you this. Hey, God's always used the catalyst of suffering to prove people. He's always used the catalyst of suffering to prove you. Uh, I heard a, a great preacher say, hey, God will never use a man mildly until he's bruised him badly. Amen. He'll never use him mildly until he bruised him badly. Hey, he said this. He said, hey, he pleased God to bruise his son. Right. Amen. Amen. How about you? Yeah. He might please God to bruise you. Right. Look here who, who wrote this. Peter wrote this. Why could Peter write it? Because the Lord told him, said, the devil desires to sift you like wheat. He said, but I prayed for you that your faith faileth not. He didn't say you ain't going through the fire, Peter. He didn't say I'm going I'm to snap my fingers and it's all going to be well and good. No, he said, I prayed for you that your faith faileth not. Then afterwards, whenever they were out there fishing, the Lord came. Huh? And when they, when they got to the shore, he had some fish kindled on the, on the bank there. And after they had, had eaten, he called old Peter over and he said, Peter, do you love me? He said, yea, Lord, you know I love you. What had happened? He got old Peter where he could use him. Amen. Sent him through the, through the fire. Sent him through the troubles. Sent him through the trials. And asked Peter three times. And he, the finally he said, yea, Lord, you know I, lo I love you. He said, and feed my lambs. Yeah. Amen. Right. And who preached on the day of Pentecost? Huh? Yeah. Who preached? 3,000 souls were fed. Yeah. Amen? Hey, right. hey, you got to, God's got to send you to the fire sometime yeah. to get you to the place that he can use you. Yeah. And Peter was a prime ex example of that. So he said, think it not strange when the fire trials come upon you. Right. He could have said, hey, I've been there, amen. Yeah. Don't worry about it. Hey, it ain't going to last forever. Right. You're going to get through it. Amen? Right. And then God's going to get the glory out of it. Amen, that's what he said. And then he said in our, our, our text verse, he said uh, that, that he was going to use the fiery trials. And then he, he said this, And the fire shall try every man's work of what sort it is. Yeah. So what's he saying? He's saying this. He says he's going to show what measure, measure, of work it is. In other words, what is it accomplishing? Good. What is it doing? Good. What is it doing? In other words, he said he put you through the the fire and the and the trouble and the trials to prove to prove not only to you the measure of, of your work, but to prove to others. Yeah. Right. To prove to others, yeah. hey, what God is doing in your life with you and through you. Right. We've heard testimony how that God has brought us from where we used to be, yeah. what we used to be. I don't know about you, but uh, I'm telling you, whenever they started singing that song, give him the glory. Yeah. <laughs> My soul like to explode it in me last night, amen. Yeah. 
I don't know about you, but I know where God brought me from. <laughs> I know what he put me through. I know, hey, and I'm happy about it, amen. I'm not sad. I'm glad that God counted me worthy, amen. Amen, God's been good to me. Hey, and he proves it every day. Proves it every day, gives us men to witness to, gives us ladies uh, to witness to. We got preachers, Sunday school teachers. We got people doing everything for the Lord. Yeah. Hey, man, I'm telling you, I'm glad he's proven, yeah. Yeah. proven the measure of our worth. Hey, Amen. Yeah. That's what he wants to do for you. A uh, 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 man after said, Brother Rock, what's the will of God for my life? I said, I'll tell you what the will of God is for everybody's life. To give him glory. Yeah. Amen. Right. I don't care what you do. I don't care where you, where you go, what kind of, uh, of work you have. Whatever you do in your occupation, you're still supposed to give God glory. Right. Amen. Right. That's showing that he's working in your life. Yeah. That's showing that he's using you in the cap capacity that he's planned for you all along. Right. Amen. Amen. Uh, he did say this, you know. He said uh, uh, that he has good work with, for us to walk in from the foundations of, of the world. Uh, 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 Ephesians 2.10. Amen. And we just got to get to the place that God can expose that. Amen. Yeah. And use us for the glory of God. Amen. Yeah. So you, that old boy who t told me that, I said, well, uh, I'll give you an oppor opportunity. But he didn't work out. <laughs> he didn't prove that he had too much worth because he wasn't ready. He wasn't ready for God to work in his life. So you got to get to the place that you're ready for the Lord to use your life. Then I promise you, he'll use you in a way that you never imagined in a million years. I, I, I tell this all the time. 38 years ago, if you'd have told me I'd been trying to do anything for, for the Lord, I'd have probably used some foul language and run you off. But God, God stepped right in the middle of my life, stepped right in the middle of my life uh, and saved my never-dying soul and it's been the best thing that ever happened to me. Amen. And, and, and I'm telling you, I'm happy happy that the Lord has used my life. I want him to use me more. I want to do more for the Lord. And you are too, too. Amen. Thank you, Brother Doug. Thanks to listeners like you, IBC has had over 100,000 views on our YouTube channel. If you haven't already, subscribe today. And as always, thanks for listening.